What's good, YouTube? My name is Specialist Sorensen. I am in the California Army National Guard, and I'm going to be talking about the sad truth about waivers to get into the Army and just the military in general. And here's a sad thing. When we're dealing with recruiters, you have to understand, and I talked about this in my last video, but since then, a lot of people commented on specific situations that are that are just keeping them from getting into the military. Your enlistment process is only going to be as good as your recruiter. Now, what does that mean? Well, some recruiters don't really want to go the extra mile to get someone who is not qualified into the Army. The waiver process can be long and grueling depending on which waiver you need. Some people need a medical waiver. Some people need a conduct waiver. Some people need a waiver for finances or whatever it is. Now, the process can go better if you are proactive. What do I mean by that? By making sure you're the best possible candidate to get into the Army, regardless of whatever waiver you need, because that's extra work for the recruiter. And at the end of the day, a lot of recruiters don't want to do extra work. Just like any other industry, there are going to be different levels of recruiters. There are going to be some great recruiters who see your potential and understand who you are, as a potential soldier or person in the military. And there's gonna be some recruiters that just don't wanna deal with that. They'd rather go get a kid who's 18 year old, who's fresh, right? Who doesn't need to go through this process, who's easier to get into the military. That's the sad truth about it. Now, like I said and mentioned before, I actually got back into the California Army National Guard about a year ago now. It's a little more than a year since I re-signed and I had to get a waiver. Now, that was the second time I tried to get back into the National Guard, 2020, right? I tried to get back in around 2017 when I lived in Oregon, and I was dealing with a recruiter who was just like a recruiter that I mentioned that didn't really want to go the extra mile to help me get into the National Guard. They didn't want to give me the resources I needed uh, because, you know, a lot of people don't take the time to scour YouTube, right? To scour the internet, to look for answers and to look for what they need to get into the military. They're usually relying on the recruiter to get them in and give them all the answers. But the recruiter won't give you all the answers. So I was working with a recruiter who was less than the recruiter I have now or who didn't want to work with me uh, as much as my my most recent recruiter. And it was like pulling teeth to try to get in contact with this guy. I was reading in the comments of my last video how a lot of people, you know, have been trying to contact the recruiter for weeks and months. And that's not by accident, guys. They know you're contacting them. They could be on some kind of duty or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's hard to get you into the military. And they just probably don't want to do the extra work. I mean, you got to understand a recruiter's job. They are getting contacted all hours of the day. And believe, believe it or not... A lot of the people that come to them don't even get into the military. There's some things that they mess up, right? They can go to MEPS and say, hey, I you know, hurt my shoulder when I was you know, 15. Now I have to get a medical waiver, right? Or some people just get disqualified for whatever reason. A lot of people don't really get in. So they're dealing with so many different candidates. And here comes a person who maybe was in the military before or who needs a special waiver. And now they just think, like, oh, man, that's extra work. So some things you can work on, and again, I talked about this in my other video, but the best thing you can do to make yourself the best candidate is don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? That's the first thing I can recommend is work with different recruiters because different recruiters are going to have different things going on in their lives. And some are just going to be better than others. And some are going to want to help you more than others, as long as you show that you're genuinely interested. And what do I mean by showing that you're genuinely interested? That means making sure you do everything you can to make their life easy. During, of course, a lot of you notice that during this recruiting process, this recruitment process, there's so many documents that you need. You need your original identification, your you know, bank's numbers, you need to fill out applications, you need to get them whatever documentation. Make sure you're doing that in a timely manner and then prompted. That means making sure you have all your stuff squared away and together before you go see your recruiter, before they need that you know document. Oh, you need my birth certificate? Here it is. You need my college degree? Here it is. You need this whatever? Here it is, right? You need to make sure you're helping them and making their job easier. But back to what I was talking about before. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Work with many different recruiters. Um, I had the luxury of living in San Diego, uh, California. And so there's so many different recruiting offices in a 10 mile radius. 
Maybe you don't have that luxury. Maybe you only have two, but it's better to go to two of them, right? Maybe you're just thinking about the military as a whole. Instead of looking for the National Guard or the Army, look for the Marines or look for the Navy. If you really want to get into the military, sometimes you just got to go to the branch that's willing to give you a chance. I know a lot of Air Force people who couldn't get into the Air Force who went to the Army because at least it was the military. Um, not sure if this is been true throughout time, but as of right now, the Air Force has the highest standards into getting in to the Air Force. Um, they do like credit checks in some categories. You need security clearances for a lot of the jobs or just the Air Force in general. So make sure that you do like a shotgun blast when you go um, and try to get into the military. Apply to a bunch of different places. Is your If your goal is to get into the military, you gotta do your due diligence and understand that all recruiters not made equally. Some are not going to want to work with you or deal with your certain situation. Um, you got to make sure you're on top of it, right? Making sure you have all those documents and make sure you're motivated and getting them motivated to get you in the military and showing them like, hey, I'm in shape. I know the Army standards. I'm ready to kill my ASVAP. I want a high score on my ASVAP. Things like that, right? If you show them that you're a physical training stuff, right? You work out a lot on your own. You score really high on the ASVAP because you study and you work your butt off and they say, hey, this guy needs a waiver, a medical waiver, a conduct waiver, whatever waiver to get into the military. But I see that he or she is working hard, like they're in great shape, they have a great ASVAP score. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this person into the military, right? Because it shows them that you care. Every time I contact so-and-so, so recruit, they always have their documentation ready for me to go. So that's the sad truth about the uh, recruitment process, guys, and getting a waiver. It's just a pain in the butt for you and the recruiter. Just stick with it. It took me years to get back in. Um, really about a year and some change total from start start to finish the second time around. Like I said before, the first time I tried to get back in, the recruiter didn't really want to work with me. I could feel it. I just stopped working with him. But the second time I tried to get in, I had a good recruiter. Uh, it took a while for me to get in. I had to do a bunch of different things before I could get my waiver, but I did it. I just finished basic training and my OSIT infantry training about a month and a half ago and now i'm in the national guard so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i hope your situation works out for you if you want to see any more videos like this let me know and i'll continue to make these videos along with other videos